What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Argon Neo case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Recently we took a look at the Argon 1 case made by the same company as the big gray one sitting on the table, but the Neo comes in at $15 instead of around $35, and it's passively cooled just like my favorite case, the Flirk. Now this is the Flirk case, very similarly priced. This one goes for 15, the Argon Neo goes for 15. They're both passively cooled by the case itself, and what I mean by that is the case is made of aluminum and it makes contact with the Raspberry Pi CPU. In turn, it dissipates heat from the CPU using the aluminum on the case. They're basically big heatsink cases. But in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Argon Neo and kind of compare it against the Flirt case, and I'll also run some thermal tests on this. Like I mentioned, it's a $15 case, passively cooled, all aluminum, and straight out of the box, right off the bat, I can tell you it does offer a few things that the Flirt case falls short on, like full access to the GPIO, the DSI connector, and the camera connector on the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box and see what we're working with here. Argon does offer a little add-on to this. It's a fan add-on, but by the time you add that to the Neo, it's the same price as the Argon 1, so I'd just rather get the Argon 1. The bottom here is plastic, just like on the Flirt case. They offer some rubber feet that you can place on it. Underneath here, I can see where my RAM chip and my CPU will touch when I put the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. But one of the cool things I really like about this case is this aluminum magnetically attached cover. So if you have your Raspberry Pi inside of this case and you need to access the GPIO, the DSi connector, or the camera connector, all you need to do is pull the top off that case and you have full access. It's also marked out here for you. But I will admit, I don't think this is going to cool as well as the Flirt case will, mainly because of that magnetically attached cover. Yes, it's still going to transfer heat from the other aluminum on the case, but I just don't think it's going to transfer as much heat as the Flirt case will. Now, with the Flirt case, you can access the GPIO using a ribbon cable, but getting to that DSi and camera connector is a bit tricky. But for different projects, I can see where the Neo case would come in really handy with that detachable cover. And overall, I really do like the way the Neo looks. So assembling the Neo is super easy. It comes with all the screws, the rubber feet for the bottom if you want to add them, and a conductive pad to go on the CPU and RAM chip. You could also use thermal paste if you don't want to use the pad. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this real quick. Basically, the Raspberry Pi is going to sit in here. The case itself is going to make contact with the CPU and the RAM chip. Personally, I don't mind using these thermal pads, but I know there's a lot of people out there that would want to opt for some thermal paste, and that's totally fine. But most of the people buying a case like this will use what's included, so that's what we're going to do in this video. Make sure you peel off the plastic protector on the thermal pad. There's one on the top and the bottom. I'm going to place it right on the CPU and the RAM. I'm going to line it up. And now I'm just going to grab the top half of the case. And I'll go ahead and line the Pi up. There's two little nubs inside of this case that'll line up with two of the holes on the Raspberry Pi. But all of the screws that hold everything together go through the bottom half of the case. The Pi is going to be secure in here when we lock this down. There's four screws. You don't need to over tighten it, but everything should snug up inside of the case. So it's now completely assembled. I also added the rubber feet to the bottom. So this case actually has a lot going for it. Full access to the GPIO, passively or actively cooled if you buy their add-on. And you could also add hats, but you'd have to remove that top cover. Overall, when it's fully assembled, I think it looks really sleek. And at 15 bucks, I think it's a pretty decent deal for what you're getting here. And just to be perfectly clear, yes, there are cheaper cases out there. You can get plastic cases for around $3 on eBay and then buy a dollar heatsink for it and you got a much cheaper case. You can actually use cardboard and make a case for your Pi if you want to, but it's never going to turn out and look this nice. When comparing this with the Flirt case, they are right on par with the size. The Flirt case is a tad taller, I'd say 2-3 to three millimeters, but the Neon is a bit wider. So if you already got a project going on using a Flirt case, this might fit right in its place. So now it's time to get into some testing. I'm going to be running this at an overclock of 2.1 gigahertz. I'm also going to test it at 1.5, the stock clocks, and we'll face it off against the Flirt case. I got a few tests that I want to run here. I always run a little script to give me some temps in the background. I'm going to test idle temperatures, 720p, YouTube video playback. I'm also going to test some temps while extracting an image, and then we'll run an extreme test. And my extreme test maxes out all four cores for 20 minutes straight. I'll leave a log in the background here 
But I'm going to go ahead and get on with this. I'll make up some charts and we'll be back in a sec. All right, so here we are. I've set my temp limit on my Raspberry Pi to 80 degrees Celsius. When it hits that temperature mark, the CPU will underclock itself. Like I said, I wanted to face this off against the Flirt case at the stock clocks and the 2.1 gigahertz overclock. And throughout my test, the Flirt case did beat out the Neo. One thing that I really noticed with this Neo is the top cover just doesn't get as hot. That's because it's not permanently attached to itself. So what's really happening here is the Flirt case just has more metal to absorb all that heat from the CPU. But overall, under normal use, even with the overclock, both of these cases do really well in cooling the Raspberry Pi. But it's a really different story when the Raspberry Pi 4 is overclocked and you need to stress it for a long period of time. With my extreme test and the stock clocks, both of these cases kept it under thermal throttle. But when we did that overclock and tried to stress it out, it only took the Neo 12 minutes to hit that thermal throttle wall, and for the Flirt case it took 14 minutes, but both of these hit that thermal throttle with this test. So if you like overclocking your Pi and you need to stress it out for long periods of time, I would suggest against both of these cases to get something with active cooling. But under normal use, either at the stock clocks or overclock, both of these cases performed quite well. So in the end, it really comes down to which case you like the look of most, and do you need access to those GPIO pins, the DSi connector, and the CSi connector. Because with the Neo, it's very easy to do, and with the Flirt case, you will need ribbon cables. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking up either of these cases, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.